my dear brothers and sisters, welcome to worship, brought to you by the Kilwallin and University Road Moravian Churches. I'm Livingston Thompson, and I invite you to ask your friends to log in and join us for this half an hour of worship. We're delighted to have today our members of the two congregations sharing with us in worship. The message will be brought to us by Brother Mark Kernahan, a leading brother from the University Road Congregation. And then reading the lessons for us today, Kathy Lowe and Andrea Finlay. We're delighted also to have Sister Roberta Hoy leading us in the intercessions for today. We are thankful to Sister Thompson for editing for us the worship for our online experience. And I invite you to share with us in the reading of the watchwords for today. From Jeremiah 1 and verse 17 for this, the third Sunday in Lent. Stand up and tell them everything that I command you. Stand up and tell them everything that I command you. And then from 2 Corinthians 4 verse 5. We do not proclaim ourselves. We proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord. We do not proclaim ourselves. We proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord. Stand up and bless the Lord. The Lord your God adore. Stand up and bless his glorious name. Henceforth and forevermore. And I invite you brothers and sisters to join with me in the prayers and you are invited to share in the responses which you'll see in bold on your screen. O oh, Saviour of the world, the Son, Lord Jesus, stir up thy strength and help us, we humbly beseech thee. By the cross and precious blood, thou hast redeemed us, save us, and help us, we humbly beseech thee. Thou hast saved thy disciples when ready to perish. Hear us and save us, we humbly beseech thee. Let the pitifulness of thy great mercy loose us from our sins, we humbly beseech thee. Make it appear that thou art our saviour, and mighty deliverer. O oh, save us, that we may praise thee, we humbly beseech thee. Draw near according to thy promise from the throne of thy glory. Look down and hear our crying, we humbly beseech thee. Come again and dwell with us, O Lord Christ Jesus. Abide with us forever, we humbly beseech thee. And when thou shalt appear with power and great glory, may we be made like unto thee in thy glorious kingdom. Thanks be to thee, O Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. And now, brothers and sisters, if you're just joining us, we invite you now to join with the members of Kilwallin and University Road Churches in singing the first hymn. deep the Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure, that He should give His only Son to make a wretch His treasure. How great the pain of searing loss, the Father turns His face away. His wounds that mother chosen one bring men 
heavenly sons to glory. Behold the man upon the cross, my sin upon his shoulders. Ashamed I hear my mocking voice call out among the scoffers. It was my sin that held him there until it was accomplished. His dying breath has brought me life. I know that it is finished I will not boast in anything No gifts, no power, no wisdom but I will boast in Jesus Christ His death and resurrection Why should I gain from His reward? I cannot give an answer But this I know with all my heart His wounds have paid my ransom The Old Testament lesson is taken from Exodus chapter 20, verse 1 to 17. The Ten Commandments. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above or that is on the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and the fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth the sea and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother, so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or male or female slave, or ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning. Jesus cleanses the temple. John chapter 2, verses 13 to 22. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove them all out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, Take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zell for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, 
What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will rise it up again. The Jews then said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. Amen. Well, good morning and welcome to uh, Worship on the Web for University Road and Kilwarlan Moravian Churches. And I hope that in today's homily, I have something that you can take with you for the rest of the week. It's the first week in March and I can hear Sister Dorothy Keenan say, oh, is it Mark Kernahan? There's bound to be some Moravian history today, but I'm sorry to disappoint. <laughs> I don't have any history today. And it's very hard to believe that this Sunday last year I was taking the service at Chelsea Moravian Church and then next Sunday last year I took the service at University Road. Uh, it was about 14th of March just before the first lockdown and I remember thinking what's going to happen thereafter and I know a lot of us haven't been in church since then so I do hope we can get back to worship in our church soon. And this is the third week in Lent. And what did you give up and are you still with it? I gave up white chocolate and I'm still holding on. Oh, that's if Sundays don't count. Um, you can discuss that over dinner as well. I'm also trying to lose weight. And the pandemic has stopped me going to Slimming World classes. But you know what? I was getting fed up with them anyway. Uh, because I was comparing myself to others and thinking, how are they losing more weight than me each week? Some would call it uh, jealousy or envy. I call it comparison is the thief of joy. And that's today's quote for you to take with you. Comparison is the thief of joy. And Comparing and comparison, uh, it just strikes me like lightning. Maybe as I'm strolling through social media or visiting a friend or when I'm out shopping. It could be someone I know or someone I don't know at all. Suddenly I find myself measuring up to them. Am I richer or poorer than them? Am I better looking or worse looking? Or am I smarter or not so smart compared to them and you end up or either I end up jealous, angry, uh, strangely forgetful of my blessings while I focus on someone else or you know to become arrogant and proud and snobbish and then possibly after that shame and guilt set in and I hope they don't see it in my face. We compare our lives against others every day. Go on, I admit it. Family friends recently compared their neighbours who were heavy drinkers and heavy smokers against their own family whose father, a non-smoker, non-drinker, had developed cancer. The comparison was eating them up. And then of course it's the vaccine jab. How many of you felt annoyed when you saw someone who you thought was less deserving getting it before you. To be fair, that's one joy, that one comparison joy that has not been stolen from me as I've been able to adjust my mindset and gratitude to agree that for everyone who gets it, no matter who, it makes my life better for me. When we judge and measure according to the standards of the world, we will always come up short. But when we measure to Jesus' standards and his perspective, we will see that his plan and purpose for our life and the amazing care and detail that was put into making us who we are, then they don't match. 
It is, of course, embarrassing to admit that you struggle with envy and pride. So today, let's call it comparison virus. It's difficult to beat, as it's sometimes known as unconscious bias. It creeps up on you. The New Testament gives us two commandments, and one of those is love thy neighbour, which translated as let's love everybody. And this is something that we struggle to do when comparison gets in the way. As Philippians 2 verse 2 says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. And I think those are powerful words. I also think being thankful for everything and living with gratitude changes everything. If we start just with gratitude for having friends, rather than focusing on either a comparison of abundance that we have or a comparison of scarcity that we have, then it's much more likely that we will not spend our time comparing ourselves to others and then having our joy taken away. So I'm aware that if you're like me on a Sunday, you maybe listen to the provincial service and then we go to Grace Hill and then we go to Lockbrook and then we go to University Road called Warren. You know, and sometimes it gets too easy to wind forward the homily or we enjoy the singing at one because we compare it with the not good singing in the other and the prayers in one aren't as good as the other. And you know what? It steals the whole joy of the worship. Let's just be grateful that we're still online. Comparison is the thief of joy. Don't let it steal your happiness. Comparison is the thief of joy. Amen. Trusting in God's care for his children as we find our way through 
next stages of this pandemic, we pray to our Lord. For those who are sick, we pray for those who are unwell due to the ongoing pandemic or other illnesses, and in your compassion, grant them strength and healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our health workers, we pray for all who minister to the sick throughout our health service, that they may renew their strength in you and be channels of restoration and renewal for those who suffer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the anxious, we pray for all who are anxious about loved ones, friends and neighbours. Enable them to trust in you and be steadfast in hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the lonely and the isolated, we pray for all those who are isolated and alone at this time, that they may experience your loving presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the strong and the vulnerable, we pray that you would inspire those who are strong to care for the vulnerable and to serve them in love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your church who longs to praise you throughout this strange and confusing time. Through your creative spirit, fire our imaginations to proclaim your unchanging love in new ways. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those in authority, we pray. We pray that they can make difficult decisions that affect the lives of many. Grant them wisdom and courage. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for traders and employees who are fearful for the future that businesses may be secured, jobs protected, and families supported. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all of those facing financial hardship, that you would support and sustain them. We remember also those who seek to fill Christ's command to love for one another through food banks and charities and through acts of simple kindness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those in education, we pray that at this uncertain time that you inspire those who feel bored or directionless, protect the vulnerable and give fresh hope to the dismayed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With sadness, we remember those who have gone before us Give us thankful hearts for the privilege of knowing them. Strengthen our faith in your Son who died for us and rose again in glory that we may share in his victorious life. At this time of Lent, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of life, in this time of crisis for families and communities, our nation and our world, we turn to you in faith. We seek your guidance and receive your blessing, knowing that nothing in all creation can separate us from your love made known to us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. We ask this in the name of him who took on our ills, who suffered and rose for us. For we know that he lives and reigns with you forevermore world without end. Amen. And now, brothers and sisters, let us have our closing prayer. O Lord God, form us all while we remain on earth unto your praise, that each one fully may attain your blessed aim through grace, till we in heaven your face shall see, may spirit, soul, and body be preserved by thee against that day. Blameless, O Lord, we pray. 
Remember, O Lord, according to the multitude of your mercies, your whole church, all who join with us in prayer, all our brothers and sisters, wherever they may be in your vast kingdom, who stand in need of your grace and help. Pour out upon them the riches of your mercy, so that redeemed in soul and body and steadfast in faith, together we may ever praise your wonderful and holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you for sharing with us in worship today, my dear brothers and sisters. And we ask you to join us again next Sunday at the same time when we will have another in the series of our online worship from Kilwallin and University Road. And just in terms of the week ahead, we just want to remind you all that we will be having on Wednesday evening our Bible study as usual at seven o'clock and the link for this will be sent to you. Remember also that on Thursday at 1.30 p.m., we will be having our lunchtime prayer. And later on, you will hear from us further information relating to our Passion Week readings, which will be hap happening during the week uh, after the 28th of March, uh, during that week at 7 p.m. each evening for our Passion Week. And then we will be having a special service for Monday, Thursday and Good Friday. And then, of course, with a grand service on Easter Day. Pass the word on to others. Until next week, God bless you. Goodbye.